I've always gone out shopping on Black Friday for many years now. But two years ago was by far the scariest experience I've ever had. It was Thanksgiving Day, and I was excited to go buy a new TV. I was planning on going to Target for a big sale they were having on electronics, and they were opening at 6 p.m. on Thanksgiving night. I was at my parents' place, and they had over quite a few of our family members from my mom's side of the family. I chatted with all of them, and then had dinner with everyone. Then I left their house to Target to go buy a giant TV. I arrived at Target about 20 minutes before they opened. I saw that there was already a decent sized line of people waiting to get inside. It wasn't too long though and I figured I still had a decent chance of getting the TV I wanted. I got out of my car and went to the back of the line, and as I did, I saw a few other people get in line behind me. I waited in line for the remaining minutes until I saw the doors to Target being unlocked. I watched as people started to go inside, then I walked quickly with everyone else. And once I got inside, I made a beeline for the electronics department. The store was really crowded, and it was hard to get through everyone, but I was able to make it there in a few minutes without running into anyone or anything like that. I got to the TVs to see a few people had already grabbed the size and brand that I had wanted, which was 50 inches. I walked quickly over to them, and just as I did, I saw another person grab one to reveal that there was just one more left behind it. I quickly reached out and got the last one. I was so happy to actually have it in my hands, because I had been pretty nervous I wouldn't be able to get it. I knew how quickly they would sell out. Probably two or three seconds after I had gained full control of it, someone came from my right side and grabbed the TV that I had in my arms. It started to come out of my hands until I grabbed it and pulled it back. At that point, the person shoved me a little bit and I almost gave up the TV. I turned and saw a man wearing a blue coat and a slight beard. He was looking at me, and as we made eye contact, he said that I had his TV. I said sorry to the man, but I had gotten the last one. The man started to turn and walk away, but then did a 360 turn and came back to me. He then asked me if I could please give it to him. I really didn't want to, and I said no, I'm sorry. He then told me how he would have got to the TV sooner, but somebody had gotten in his way. Then he added he thought he had got to the TV before me as well. I knew the man was behind me and I had got to it before him. He had tried to take it out of my hands after I already had it. I didn't want to cause a scene, but I wasn't going to give up the last TV to him, so I told him sorry one last time and started towards the check lanes. The man followed me all the way there trying to reason with me. The more we walked, the angrier he became. It came to the point where I just started to ignore him. I finally got to the check lane, and he cursed at me and walked away. I checked out and walked my TV to my car in the parking lot and loaded it up. But as I was putting my TV in my car, I saw the man start to approach me once again. This time I got a bad feeling. It was a different environment out in the parking lot where there were less people around. I hurried up as fast as I could and then shut the door. The man was standing there from about 20 feet away, flipping me off. Then he got into a car that was parked nearby. I ignored him, and I actually felt kind of bad for the guy because I knew how great of a deal I was getting on the TV, but I also knew I didn't owe it to him to give him the last one. I started up my car and began to drive away. I drove back to my house to drop off the TV. My house was close to the target, as well as my parents' house. As I turned onto my street, I noticed a car turn behind me. Then, as I was pulling into my driveway, I saw the car stop in front of my driveway. I got a terrible feeling. The car then started to honk. I looked and saw the man from Target yelling something out his window. Then he sped away in his car. I was glad he was gone, but I was a little concerned that he now knew where I lived. The man seemed to be a little crazy to get so worked up over a TV. I brought my TV in the house, then I locked it up and went back to my parents for the rest of Thanksgiving. I stayed there until about 10 p.m., then drove back to my place. When I got there, I just felt suspicious. I was worried the guy had tried to break into my house or something when I was gone, but I figured I was just being paranoid. I looked around for my car at my place, and everything seemed fine, so I got out and headed for the front door. But as I made it to about 10 feet from my door, I noticed something. I had a couple of pillars in front of my house, 
and behind the side of the right pillar I saw what appeared to be an arm. I knew who it had to be. I wanted to run away, but didn't want to make it obvious. I quickly stopped in my tracks, but said, forgot my phone to myself. I was hoping this would work. Then I turned around and started walking back to my car calmly. The man seemed to buy it, and I wanted badly to run to my car, but I decided to remain calm. I didn't hear or notice the man moving at all, but when I reached about 10 feet from my car, I couldn't take it anymore. I broke into a sprint and ran the rest of the way. As I had reached my car, I heard the man now running after me. I got inside quickly and drove away as fast as I could. As I did, I felt something hit the car. It seemed like a rock. I drove back to my parents' place and told them everything. There was a decent sized dent in the side of my car. I stayed there for the night and we called the police as well. However, I don't believe the man was ever caught, but at least I never did hear from him again. This happened on Black Friday about five years ago. I was a young 19-year-old woman in my second year of college. I lived pretty close to my school, so I was able to work at a nearby clothing store which was in a pretty big shopping center. I was scheduled to work on Black Friday, which I had done the year before. I knew it would be a long shift and really busy, but I also knew I was getting paid extra, so it was worth it. I got to work early on the morning of Black Friday. We opened at 6 a.m. and I was there. The store I worked at was pretty big, so we had a lot of people working. I was mainly a cashier, but I would also do other tasks as well. As I was working at the cash register shortly after we opened, a man came and checked out in my line. He was middle-aged and bald, and I remember he had a missing tooth in the front. As he was standing there, I could feel him just staring at me the whole time. Then he complimented me on my outfit and seemed to give off a bit of a creepy feeling, but I was nice to him and knew it was just part of the job. After that, he left. About an hour later, I moved from cashier to working in the women's department. As I was folding some clothes, I noticed the man once again. We were pretty busy, not enough where people were lined up outside or anything, but we were much busier than any other day. So I found it strange how I saw the same man once again about an hour later. But the part that I really didn't like is how I caught him just staring at me once again. When we made eye contact, he quickly looked away. It was as if he was almost hiding behind a rack of clothes. I did my best to mind my own business and eventually the man was gone. About 10 minutes later, the man came back. I was still folding clothes and in the same area, but this time the man actually approached me. He asked me what I was doing after work. I didn't really give him an answer, I just said I don't know. He then asked if I would go with him. I told him no, sorry, and then he grabbed onto my arm. He said we should just leave. This really took me by surprise, and I kind of yelled a little bit. I told him to stop grabbing me. At that point, there were a few people that noticed, and the man let go of me. He then walked away really fast. After that, I told a co-worker, but the man was nowhere to be seen so I thought he would be gone for good. But later on, probably five hours later, I saw him again, and he was staring at me. I was sure by now that the man was stalking me or something, and I was kind of concerned he would follow me when I left. I was getting off in about an hour, and I just hoped I wouldn't see the man when I was done. And I didn't, until 10 minutes before I was off, when I noticed him. I got a coworker to walk out to my car with me. The man didn't follow me, which was a huge relief and I drove home. I got home and thankfully the man didn't follow me. However, that night, I was awoken to a knocking at my front door. I lived with my parents at the time, but I knew it wasn't them or my younger brother because they were all asleep. I laid there confused at first until I remembered the man who had been stalking me at the store. Then I got a really creepy feeling. I didn't want to get up or even look out the window. Thankfully, I heard the sound of my brother leaving his bedroom. He said out loud he wondered who was knocking on the door at this hour as he walked. It was 2 a.m., and I guess my brother had still been up, most likely playing video games. I heard him get closer to the door, and at that point, I left my room to go over and join him in seeing who was there. As I did, my brother said to me there was nobody there. 
He then opened the door and stepped out. He looked around and picked up something off the ground, and then came back inside. Once inside, I saw he was holding an envelope. He opened it up and pulled out two Polaroid pictures. One of them was of my bedroom window, and the other was of the store that I worked at. When I realized this, I just about had a heart attack. I explained the man to my brother, and I'm 100% sure he's the one who left the envelope. We both woke up my parents, and the police were called. I ended up filling out a report and answering several questions. I got the next few weeks off work, and to my surprise, the next day the man was found at the store once again and caught. On Black Friday of 2016, I went to Walmart to see the deals that they had. There were a number of things that I was interested in getting. Nothing too big like a TV, but a few small things and some Christmas gifts for people. I went there at about midnight, and the store was pretty busy. It was really weird to see a store that crowded at midnight. I looked around, but it was tough to get around the store with it being so crowded. At one point, I was back by the doors to the back room. They had a little window in them, and I randomly was just looking through it to the back rooms. As I did, I noticed someone walking into the back, but they were not a Walmart worker. They wore a ski mask and all black. I thought it had to be some sort of joke or something. There was a worker standing nearby, so I decided to let him know. I told him there was a guy in the back wearing a ski mask. He looked surprised and then asked me to show him where he was. I pointed in the window and he opened the door and asked me where. We both went inside the back room. It got a lot quieter back there as there were finally no crowds. I looked in the direction that the man went and I explained that he was walking that way. Just as I took a few steps in that direction, I felt someone grab me from behind and cover my eyes with their hand. They seemed to be wearing gloves. Then I felt someone else grab my legs and next thing I knew I was being picked up by at least two people. They carried me a little ways and then dropped me into what felt like one of those big garbage cans on wheels. I fell onto a bag of garbage. I looked up and saw two men in ski masks. They started pushing me and told me to shut up. I wondered how this was going on with no employees seeing this. I couldn't see much, but I saw that we were passing by an open door leading to outside. I don't know what got into me, but at that moment, I felt there was something I had to do. So I jumped against the side, causing the garbage can that I was in to tip over. I fell out of it and got up and began running. I felt the men right on my heels, and once I made it out the door, I took a left for the front end of the store. We were at the side where there was no people, so I ran as fast as I could, and once I made it back to the front, the men stopped chasing me. I ran straight to my car and drove all the way home. Once there, I called the police. I know I should have called them sooner, but my mind was racing and I was just desperate to get back home where I felt safe. By the time I called, however, I was told there had been other calls about the men in ski masks at that Walmart. I don't know what those men were up to, but I'm so happy I was able to get away. This was on Black Friday four years ago. It was in the middle of all the crowded Black Friday shopping going on. I had gone to Best Buy to look at computers. I was intending on buying a new laptop and possibly a desktop computer as well. They were probably the most popular thing that was going on sale there that day, so I got there a couple of hours early and waited in line. There was quite a few other people waiting, so I brought a chair and some hand warmers and just watched videos and played games on my phone as I waited. I remember there was a guy standing behind me who had short blonde hair, and he was just standing there facing me but not really looking at me the entire time. At one point, I asked him how he was doing, but he didn't answer me. He didn't even look at me at all. The more time went by, it seemed awkward and just really strange as well. At last, finally, the doors to Best Buy were open and all the people rushed inside. I went to the computers and got the laptop I had been planning on getting. I ended up getting the desktop computer as well. 
I was there for maybe 30 minutes, and then I left and brought the things to my car. I put them in the front passenger seat and then went around and got into the car. But as soon as I sat down and started the engine, I looked in my mirror and saw the man who had been standing behind me in line. He was sitting in the back seat of my car. I freaked out and immediately jumped out of the car and ran all the way back inside to Best Buy. I got out my phone and called the police. Once I regained my composure, I went back out into the parking lot, but my car was gone. I realized I had left the keys in it. The police arrived a short time later. We figured the guy was probably planning to rob me, so I guess he got my stuff. I was just lucky to be okay. But the next day, I got a call saying my car had been found abandoned about 10 miles away, and both of my computers were still inside. This story takes place on one of the best nights for kids around America, but the worst night for me. It was Christmas Eve of 2019. For a little backstory, three or four months before this event took place, I broke up with my girlfriend. Let's call her Jennifer. The event that caused me to break up with her was she stole over $900 from me. I caught her and all she said before she left is, this isn't over. Fast forward three months to Christmas Eve. Since we live in Texas and have a house in the hill country, every year on Christmas my family usually goes there to celebrate. However, this year I couldn't make it because I had to work. I was 17 years old and had just got a job at my local supermarket and I had to work all day of Christmas. I stayed home, but I had no problem with being alone. On Christmas Eve night, it was getting late, probably 11 o'clock or so. I decided to take a shower and go to bed as I needed to get up early the next day. As I started to shower, I heard a strange noise from the garage, sort of like a metallic banging. I thought the noise was coming from the heater because I had put the water as hot as it would go. I took my shower and when I finished, I went to go get in bed. As I did, I heard the noise again, although this time it was on the other side of the yard. I was confused because I didn't think there was anything over there. I went to go look out the window and see. I looked out and didn't see anything but my backyard, completely empty. I completely disregarded it because my backyard is pretty flat and empty and it has nowhere for someone to hide. Now it's hard to explain, but my window is fairly large and it has a blind spot to the left where there's a corner. Somebody could easily hide there but I was tired and I didn't think about that at all. As I walked off, I heard a bang again, but this time on the window of my house. And as I looked out the window, I saw the figure of a person dressed in all black standing at my window. It made me jump. However, I wasn't too scared as I'm a fairly large dude and a high school football player. This all changed when the person at the window reached for his pocket for what I assume was a gun. I ran away from the window towards my parents' room to go retrieve my dad's shotgun. I knew he kept it in a safe and had the safe key under his pillow. As I was running to retrieve it, I dialed 911. As soon as the dispatcher answered, I heard the horrific sound of glass shattering. I made it to my parents' room and shut the door quietly. I whispered into the phone what was happening to the dispatcher. She said to stay on the line as the county sheriff was en route but it would take about five minutes or so. I told her I was going to retrieve the shotgun. She said that's not a bad idea, but to only use it if I had to and to use it with caution. I quickly realized my dad took the gun with him to the hill country because they were going to a gun range. I informed the dispatcher that the gun was gone. She said to make sure to stay on the line. For a moment, everything was silent and I thought that maybe the burglar or whoever was in my house got spooked when they realized someone was home. My heart sank into my chest when I heard not one, but two sets of boots walking up the stairs. I heard a heavy metal pole scraping across the floor. I locked and barricaded the door to my parents' room. Then I almost passed out when I heard one of them talk, not in any voice, but Jennifer's. She said, Merry Christmas, Tommy. 
Then I heard a male voice mockingly say, We know you're in there. Then they knocked on the door of my parents' room. I almost screamed and got underneath the bed. Jennifer then said, Don't worry if you don't open the door. We'll open it for you. I heard the pull hit the door and the lock started jiggling. I had to put my hand over my mouth to keep from being too loud. Then, all of a sudden, I heard police sirens and Jennifer muttering curse words. They ran down the stairs to try to leave out the front door when I heard someone yell freeze. I heard a bunch of yelling and then an officer come in and announce himself and tell anybody in the house to make themselves known. I called out to him saying that I was Tommy and I dialed 911. He told me to come out slowly with my hands visible. As I left my parents' room, I saw the two being escorted out in handcuffs. The rest of my night consisted of paperwork and me talking to my parents, who were making a three-hour drive to come home and be with me. This incident was very disturbing to me, and I'm grateful that I reacted the way that I did. Had I not, I may not be here right now. Christmas, everyone's favorite time of the year. It was certainly my favorite time of the year until one night that changed everything. And that one night changed my life forever. The Christmas of 2018, I was sitting in my living room watching the snow get heavier and heavier. I was enjoying myself drinking a cup of hot cocoa until I heard a knock at my door. I thought, who could it be at this hour? It was 1.18 in the morning. I got up to open the door and to my surprise, I saw nobody. I closed the door, thinking I was being ding-dong ditched, or it was all in my head. Five minutes later, another knock on my door. I once again got up to open the door, and when I saw nobody, I sighed and shut it. Almost immediately after, another knock on my door, and this time, I was quick enough to swing the door open, and I could just get a glimpse of a kid. He looked to be about five or six years old, running towards a house that was adjacent to mine. Surprisingly, I never knew who lived there, and quite frankly, I never seemed to care. However, this time I wanted to know why such a little kid was roaming out in the middle of the night, so I planned to go over there the next morning. Morning finally came, and I headed towards the house where I was sure I saw the little boy run into. When I knocked on the door, nobody answered. I figured they weren't home and I would come back later. That evening, I tried going back to the house and once again knocked. There was no answer again. I thought to myself this was quite strange. I then tried the door angle and to my surprise, the door wasn't locked. Curiosity got the better of me and I unlawfully entered the house knowing I was breaking and entering. As soon as I entered the house, I smelled something foul in the air, the smell of rotting meat. The inside of this house looked like nobody had lived there for years. I decided to check the upstairs of this house, and once I climbed up the stairs to the top step, I saw there were five bedrooms adjacent to each other. I checked out the one to my right, which was nothing special, just a bed and a closet. I checked out the rest of the bedrooms and found nothing. Great, I thought to myself, this was a complete waste of my time. Just as I was about to leave though, I felt a tap on my shoulder. It startled me. I knew I was caught red-handed, but just as I could say anything, I saw it was a woman and she put her hand over my mouth and shushed me. I slowly backed away and then sprinted back to my house. As I did, I heard the blood-curdling scream of the woman telling me to come back. I got back to my house and decided not to do anything. At 3 a.m., I woke up to sounds outside my window. I looked out and saw the same woman staring back at me with a wide smile that ran across her face. Her crazed eyes stared back at me on the other side of the glass. I fell back in shock and then dialed 911. Cops were at my location within minutes. I had told them what happened and they went to the house across the street. They searched it and found nothing. They told me there were no signs of anyone there since the horrifying murder that had took place in that very house. I was shocked. I hadn't heard of anything happening at all in that house, as it was an ongoing investigation. 
the cops were not able to give me the information I so desperately wanted to know. The next day, I did some research, and what I found made me sick. On December 31st, a mother and her son were brutally murdered inside that very house. December 31st, I linked everything together and stared at myself in the mirror in pure horror. The events that took place to this day have changed me forever. In the next eight months, I quit my job and had to get therapy for the rest of the year. I would wake up at late hours of the night to see the woman's crazed smile staring back at me and I would scream in pure horror. It's been a year since this traumatizing experience and I'm still recovering. This happened many years ago when I was a little boy. It was Christmas time and my family and I lived on the first floor of a large apartment complex. I remember one day on a Saturday, my mom told me that Santa was at our apartment. We went to the event room that our apartment had and they were doing a meet Santa type of thing. There wasn't a whole lot of people there, but those who lived nearby and had kids would bring them to see Santa. We went there and got in line and then my sister and I met Santa. I remember when it was my turn, he asked me what I wanted for Christmas, and I told him I wanted the new PlayStation. He asked me if I live here, and I told him yes, I lived right down the hall. He then told me he would see what he could do about getting me that PlayStation, and gave me a candy cane. We then went back home. I think we made some holiday cookies or something. I don't quite remember that well, but where the story really gets interesting is later that night. I was in my bed and not really that sleepy, so I was just laying there playing on my Game Boy. I was in the middle of a level in my game when I heard a noise come from my window which was literally right next to my bed. I looked up through the blinds which were open so that you could see through them. I saw Santa standing right outside my window and it really shocked me. He motioned for me to open the window and I did. He then smiled at me and asked if I remembered him. I told him yes and he handed me another candy cane. He told me he wanted to show me his sleigh. I knew something felt off about this situation. I didn't really think Santa was supposed to show up at my window like this because it wasn't Christmas Eve yet, it was like a week before. But he was Santa after all, so I told him I'd like to see it. He told me to come out the window and so I opened it wider. As I was about to climb out the window, the door to my room opened. It was my mother, and when she saw what was going on, she ran to me and grabbed me. When she did, Santa turned and ran away into the night. She asked me what was going on, and when I explained it to her, she told me that the man at my window was not really Santa, but just an imposter pretending to be him. She then called the police, but by the time they got there, the man was long gone. I was young, but when I spoke to my mom about the incident in recent years, she told me based on the information of the man dressed as Santa who was at the apartment that day, they were able to locate the man and he was caught. I'm so glad that my mom came into my room when she did. I've worked as a mall Santa for the past few Christmases now. I'm only 33, but thanks to my complete lack of exercise routine, I definitely have the figure for it. And once I have the beard and the wig and hat combo going, there's basically no telling the difference between me and a 60-year-old dude. Mall Santa work can be tough for a few different reasons. Number one, the hours are really long and the pay can be really terrible depending on which mall you manage to get employed by. Number two, the kids can be little monsters and their parents can be just as terrible on occasion too. But the reason I'm actually considering skipping the entire thing this year and having something of a budget Christmas is that you get some seriously disturbing things happening from time to time. I mean, the kind of things that keep you up at night, even after a long, exhausting shift. However, the worst thing that's ever happened to me as a mall Santa was actually nothing to do with kids, parents, or terrible pay and hours and I'm sure you'll see why after I tell the story. So every year, usually when the malls are quietest during weekday mornings, 
we get specially organized visits from special needs kids or adults with learning disabilities who are bussed in from the surrounding areas. Pretty much every other mall Santa I've spoken to about this agrees that it can be one of the most rewarding parts of the job and that the adults with learning difficulties are often even more excited about the prospect of meeting Santa than some of the kids are. Literally the only downside is that some of them are so heavy that my thighs hurt after having like 50 in a row sit on my lap, but other than that, it's honestly one of the best parts of the job. Last year, I'm in the middle of one of the special sessions when I get this girl coming up and sitting on my lap. I say girl, but she was legitimately a grown woman, looking like she was in her mid-30s or something, but she had the mental age of about 9 or 10, all smiles and giggles, way shy about meeting Santa again. It was cute as all get out, but the interaction was not so cute, and turned that way pretty fast. So like I said, she's all giggles and smiles as she comes up to sit on my lap, and I give her the usual spiel, asking her name, how old she is, if she's excited for Christmas and all that stuff. Then, when it comes to asking her what she wants me to bring her on Christmas Eve, she starts thinking about it, smiling at first before she suddenly gets super serious with a touch of sadness. I'm asking her if she's okay, what the problem is, and she's like shaking her head, acting like she doesn't want to tell me anything. I take the time, and explaining that no matter what she asks for, I'll try my very, very best to bring it to her, no matter how big or small it is, that Santa always tries his best to bring good little girls and boys what they ask for on Christmas. She takes a moment, then the exchange goes a little something like this. You mean it, Santa? You can get me anything I want for Christmas? Anything. Anything you want. Just tell me and I'll do my best. Okay, well... And at this point she lowers her voice to a whisper and leans into my ear. I want my boyfriend to stop hitting me. Can you make that happen? I was sort of dumbstruck for a second, like all of the things I thought she was going to ask, that would most definitely not have topped the list. I remember just nodding at first, trying to find the words, and being like, I'll make that happen for you, sure, no problem. She was so, so happy to hear that I'd fix it for her, and gave me the biggest hug I think I'd ever received while working as a mall Santa. I had to put on a huge smile and of all the times I've had to fake being jolly and merry, that time with her was the hardest. But I just felt numb, like completely broken by what I'd heard and I just tried my best to get through the rest of the session without bursting into tears. I remember all these thoughts rushing through my head, terrifying ideas of institutional abuse. She said boyfriend and that made it extra creepy. Like sure, it could have been just another guy in her care group or something, another adult with learning difficulties who she'd hooked up with somehow, but there was nothing to say that it wasn't a member of her care team that was, like, abusing her, in a completely different sense too. Not just physically, but, well, you catch my drift. So when the session was over, I approached the member of the care team that had organized the trip and had accompanied them to the mall. I didn't let anything slip. I just told them how great I thought the session had gone and asked a few details about the group that had organized them. As it turned out, they were all from the same care home type thing so I made a note of the name of the place as well as the name of the girl that was apparently being abused. That night I couldn't sleep. I just kept picturing some evil monster abusing that poor girl, taking advantage of their position to put some poor special needs woman through torture then telling her that she'd be killed if she ever breathed a word of it to anyone. And here's where stuff starts getting even more intense. Now, I could have just called 911 with the info I had at hand, registered a general complaint and then heard nothing back about it. But a buddy of mine had a cousin with the local police department and not just some gumshoe beat cop either. They were a detective. It took some convincing, but... I convinced my buddy to pass along their cell phone numbers so I could get in touch with the dude personally. It took a little while but I managed to get through to the guy. He sounded pretty skeptical at first and seemed kind of irritated that his cousin had even given me his number but once I explained what the issue was, his tone changed completely. 
Now, I didn't find this out until way later from my friend that his cousin had a special needs daughter who was probably going to have to either live with them for the rest of their life or was going to head into a group home at some point so she could have some measure of independence. So when I explained the situation with the special needs girl I met as a mall Santa, it obviously hit the guy right in the feels as the topic was so close to home. The detective tells me that he'll look into it, thanks me for letting him know. I get him to promise to tell me if anything comes of it and he says yes and we hang up. And that was the last I heard of it for like a month. Then after maybe five or six weeks I'd almost forgotten about the whole thing. Christmas was over, the mall Santa job was way behind me and I was back to working my regular hours as a self-employed mechanic. Then I get a call from a number that seems vaguely familiar although I wasn't quite sure why. Turns out it was my buddy's detective cousin who reminded me of the tip that I'd given him about the care company. Of course I remembered, but by that time I really didn't think anything would come of it, but oh how wrong I was. The detective thanks me for the information, and although he told me he couldn't say too much, he told me to keep an eye out on local media outlets. The next thing I know it's all over the local papers that there's been a misconduct scandal involving a local care company. I picked up a copy and read the story, only to find out that it's the very same one I had reported. The long and short of it is that the cops had uncovered endemic levels of abuse in the company, stuff that varied from financial discrepancies to straight up physical abuse, and sickeningly enough, there was even cases of care workers taking advantage of mentally disabled females in ways that were seriously inappropriate. There were numerous arrests, with some of the sleazier and violent criminals looking like they were going to get years in prison for how long they so cruelly taken advantage of some of the most vulnerable people in society. It made me sick to my stomach to read about how some people could bring themselves to do something like that, but it was stopped, and I felt incredible that I'd actually managed to be a part of the chain of events that brought the whole thing crashing down. I just hoped that that poor girl who was obviously pretty traumatized by what was happening to her, and just not being able to understand why it was happening either, found some measure of peace after it. And in a way, Santa did kind of bring her exactly what she wanted, even if it wasn't on Christmas Day, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is a thought that never fails to make me tear up. 